A tricky aspect of college chemistry is recording the correct number of significant figures with your measurements in lab. That's what this video is going to be discussing. To record the correct number of digits, significant figures with your measurements, you have to determine what the scale is of your measuring device. And the measuring devices that you see in lab could be a number of things. So a measuring device is anything that has lines on it or increments as you go from one line to the next. So examples of this would be like your graduated cylinders, a thermometer, a ruler, a beaker. These would all be examples of measuring devices because they have those lines on it. The first thing that you have to do when you want to report a measurement with the correct number of significant figures is you have to determine what the scale of the measuring device is. And the scale of the measuring device represents the difference between two lines on, on the instrument. So for example, if I were to consider a graduated cylinder, how does the volume change as I go from one line to the next? That's what the scale of the graduated cylinder represents. If you look at the graduated cylinders in your lab station, you're going to find that they don't all have the same scale. For some graduated cylinders, as you go from one line to the next, it represents a change of one milliliter, where the volume will increase by one milliliter. For other graduated cylinders, you're going to find that they have a scale of 0.1 milliliters or 10 milliliters. And that's that volume change as you go from one line to the next on the graduated cylinder. So to determine the scale of any measuring device, you can follow this procedure. The first thing that you want to do is you want to find the difference between two numbered lines. So I'm going to use the picture on the left here as my example as I go through this. And the squiggly lines are meant to represent that I'm just looking at a portion. Um, I'm zoomed into a graduated cylinder. So you can pick any two numbered lines that you want. And I'm going to pick the lines numbered 50 milliliters and 60 milliliters. As I go from that line labeled 50 milliliters to 60, that difference represents a volume of 10 milliliters. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to count the number of increments or the number of steps between the two numbered lines. In this graduated cylinder, I don't have any minor demarcations. I don't have any lines in between the numbered lines. So as I go from 50 milliliters to 60 milliliters on this graduated cylinder, that represents just one step. To determine the scale, what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide that volume, the difference between the two numbered lines, by the number of steps. And what I find is that the scale of this graduated cylinder is 10 milliliters per step. So as I go from one line to the next on this graduated cylinder, the volume increases by 10 milliliters. And we often just report the scale as saying, oh, the scale of this graduated cylinder is 10 milliliters. Once you've determined what the scale of your graduated cylinder is, you're then ready to make your measurement. So a couple things you want to keep in mind when you make your measurement is when you're using the glass graduated cylinders in lab and you're using an aqueous solution, you often see that curved top to the solution, um, which is called the meniscus. You want to make your measurement at the bottom of the meniscus. So in this case, that blue in my graduated cylinder is my aqueous solution, and I'm going to measure volume at the bottom of that meniscus, and I'm estimating that as the red dashed line that I have here. It's also important that you make sure that you measure um, the meniscus and you're reading that volume when the meniscus is at eye level. So you're going to have to find, for many of you, that you're going to have to squat down and get your face right in front of the graduated cylinder so that the meniscus, when you're looking at it, is at eye level. To make a measurement with the correct number of significant figures, um, I'm going to follow the, the, the procedure that I have here. 
So first I'm going to figure out which two lines are surrounding my meniscus or the bottom of the meniscus. So in this case I'm trying to read volume at that red dashed line and I see that that red dashed line is between 40 milliliters and 50 milliliters on my graduated cylinder. So what I say is that the bottom of the meniscus is between 40 and 50 milliliters. I know it's somewhere in between there. Next I want to figure out which line is it closer to and it's really clear for me to see in this picture here that the bottom of the meniscus is much closer to 40 milliliters than it is to 50. So I know the volume is is more than 40 milliliters but it's much closer to 40 than it is to 50 milliliters on this graduated cylinder and in this example that I'm looking at here. When I report my measurement what I'm going to do is I'm going to estimate how close it is to 40 milliliters. So I'm going to add a digit to my measurement to represent how close is it to 40 milliliters um, to my eye. So my estimated digit in this case, I'm reporting my measurement as 42 milliliters. That two in my measurement is an estimated digit. This is when I had to read between the lines in the graduated cylinder. I'm imagining that there's 10 marks there and it looks like it would be close to about 42 milliliters. If you reported your measurement as 43 milliliters or 41 milliliters, that would be okay because you have that estimated digit there. Your estimated digit is when you read between the lines on the graduated cylinder and every measurement has this. The last digit in every measurement is estimated. Let me look at another example here. So I have a different graduated cylinder and I'm going to follow the same steps. The first thing that I'm going to do is figure out what's the scale on the graduated cylinder. So I'm looking at this picture on the left here. I have a different graduated cylinder and I want to measure the volume of the liquid and re record the correct number of significant figures. I'm first going to determine the scale of the graduated cylinder. So I'm going to find the difference between two numbered lines and you can pick any two numbered lines you want. In this case I picked the line numbered 50 and the line labeled 45 and the difference between that represents a volume of 5 milliliters. Next I'm going to count the number of increments or the number of steps between those two numbered lines that I picked. So I'm going to start at the line for 45 milliliters and count the number of steps up until I hit 50 and what I find is I get five steps or five increments as I go from 45 to 50 on this graduated cylinder. To get the scale for the graduated cylinder I'm going to divide the volume 5 milliliters by the number of steps, 5 steps, and what I say and what I find is the scale for this graduated cylinder is 1 milliliter per step. So as I go from one line to the next on this graduated cylinder, it represents a volume of 1 milliliter. The volume increases by 1 milliliter. So now that I know what the scale of the graduated cylinder is, I'm ready to make my measurement. I'm reading at the bottom of the meniscus and what I want to do is identify the two lines on either side of the meniscus. Now this one is a little tricky because when I look at the bottom of this meniscus to my eye it looks like it's just below the line for 51 milliliters. So I'm going to identify the bottom of the meniscus as being between 50 and 51 milliliters. My next step is I want to say which line it's closer to and clearly it's much closer to 51 milliliters than 50 milliliters. When I report my measurement I need that estimated digit and the estimated digit is when I'm reading between the lines and I'm trying to say which line is it closer to and for me I see that this is almost right on top of that line for 51 milliliters. I'm going to report my measurement as 50.9 milliliters. It looks like the meniscus is just below the line and I'm saying that it's very close to 51 milliliters. That 0.9 is my estimated digit. 
you might have done your measurement slightly different. To your eye, it might look like the meniscus is exactly on that line for 51 milliliters. Another okay measurement in this case would be if you said the volume were 51.0 milliliters. In this case, you're saying, okay, it's right on that line, and the point zero represents your estimated digit. What wouldn't be okay in this case is if you reported your estimate as 51 milliliters, or I should say your measurement as 51 milliliters. And the reason why this is a problem is because you don't have an estimated digit and you aren't communicating the precision of this graduated cylinder. You aren't showing the scale of it if you don't have that estimated digit with your measurement. Because one rule that we have for measurements is that they always have to have an estimated digit. Because we have a line on this graduated cylinder for 51 milliliters, if you report the volume as 51 milliliters, you don't have an estimated digit there. You're not reading in between the lines. So to sort of summarize this relationship between the scale of a measuring device and the number of digits you record with your measurement, I have this table here. So I have various scales on the left, and then I'm telling you which digit you have to measure to. And I'm just using volume in milliliters as an example here, but the same would be true if you were talking in terms of temperature or if you were talking in terms of length and doing measurements with a ruler. So if I look at the first row here, let's say that the scale of my measuring device is 0.1 milliliters. When I add that estimated digit, I'm going to have to measure to the nearest hundredth of a milliliter, or 0.01 milliliter. An example of my measurement would be like if I recorded 61.53 milliliters, where that three is my estimated digit, that's when I had to read between the lines on the graduated cylinder. If I look at the second row on this table, if I have a measuring device where the scale is one milliliter, when I add an estimated digit, that means I'm measuring to the nearest 0.1 milliliters. And an example of my measurement would be like if I recorded 61.5 milliliters, where that 0.5 is my estimated digit. I had to read between the lines that were labeled for 60 and 61, or excuse me, 61 and 62 on the graduated cylinder. In general, you're going to find that you estimate one digit beyond the scale. So you can use scale to figure out how many digits you record with your measurement because you're always adding one digit beyond the scale. Another thing I want you to notice about this table is that the smaller the scale, the more digits you have with your measurement. In general, if you have a smaller scale, you end up with a more precise measurement. And this makes sense because a measuring device that has a smaller scale or more lines is going to be more accurate, more precise than if you were using one with much larger gaps between the lines. So in general, an instrument with a smaller scale will give a more precise measurement. And you can identify these precise measurements because they usually have more digits and more significant figures. Significant figures is how scientists communicate their certainty um, or their confidence in a measurement. Um, and that directly relates to the scale of the measuring device that you're using. So this is really a tricky concept in college chemistry, and I hope this video gives you a good head start um, for your measurements in lab this semester.